I was up, y'all. It's Poppin' Cracking It's Deep. I'll tell you guys the rest of it. It's titled, Why Hip Hop is Turning on Lil Wayne. Damn. Damn. I feel like after the whole Super Bowl situation, uh, people have started to side-eye Lil Wayne a bit. But, I mean, when that happened, I do think a lot of people were on his side and saying that, yeah, he should uh, perform at the Super Bowl. But uh, maybe his response rubbed some people the wrong way. I'm not sure. But, but, but let's hear what's happening and why hip-hop is having an issue with Wayne all of a sudden. Let's watch. Lil Wayne is a legend in hip-hop and arguably one of the best MCs of all time when he was in his prime. But it's fair to say that the past couple of months have been pretty rough for Wheezy. And well, he's not making things any easier for himself as his ego and sense of entitlement keeps contrasting with the reality of where he's at now. Because these days, people are really on his neck in a way that you usually don't expect to see happening to a legend. It's your boy Luesta, and this oh, is why hip hop is churning on Lil Wayne. Generally, Lil Wayne is a man who gets plenty of flowers and with good reason. For starters, he's responsible for an incredible catalog of music, dominating the mid-2000s with classic projects and mixtapes, which have gained him the respect of his peers and love of fans. Today we recorded that verse. I'm in the studio with Wayne. Wayne was at Hit Factory. He had like the one upstairs, his own little okay, corner. That you know what I'm saying? That was, Wayne was, that was his own vibe. Uh, Hit Factory, they, I'm gonna be honest. It was one time that that was cash money. Oh, shit. No, 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 it was. I'm talking about for years. But the thing is that he recorded that verse. I was in the studio. He was smoking like he's smoking now. The only difference is he was rapping, smoking, rapping. And he did like 30 records in my face. No, no, no. Did like 30. And 30 records that you hear on the radio right now. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Without no, a doubt. Not, not like no, no, records. No, not just like doing shit to be doing it. Yeah. No, 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 no. Yeah. Back to back. I, so I'm I, like, damn, how do I? Like, <laughs> <laughs> like, you know, like, you gotta be tired, or am I playing myself? He's not lying. Cause Cause he not we missed a, it ourselves. Love that that Wayne is literally a machine. People who don't grow up listening to Wayne really don't understand how that dude was just incredible. Mixtapes and not then go commercial and make hit after hit. As for the current generation of rappers, they owe an immense debt to Weezy. Not only because of how he rhymes and the influence of his music, but even how he reinvented how an artist is supposed to look and carry himself. Look at me like it was, that's honestly an honor for you to say some shit like that. I'm giving that, like it is that. So it's just like, what, what can I say? Like, what am I, what, what can I say about that? Like, it's look at me, bro. Just look at me and what you say? I learned Lil Wayne. I wanted to be Lil Wayne. I would talk when I was younger, girls would say I look like Lil Wayne, so I would run with that. And I would wear the fedoras, and I would wear the tight polo tees with the skinnies, and wear the vans and shit. Back then, I ordered a fake piercing off of Amazon, and I had it right here. And I used to wear it every day like I was Lil Wayne. But well, while his position as a legend is intact, things aren't exactly going so well right now. And the problem resides with Wayne not being able to see the forest for the trees. Recently, Wayne took the stage at Louisiana Fest, his own special event taking place in his native New Orleans. During his show, Wayne tore through a set of classics before rounding the night off with a major moment when he reunited with Cash Money Legends Hot Boys. More happy than the fans, I believe. You feel okay. me? Yeah. So was it a call from Wayne? Like, what brought it all back? Call from Wayne. What was that like? Call from Wayne. It was like, me? You calling me? You okay? feel me? It was like too. a god answer oh, yeah. prayer, you know what I'm saying? You know, just to get that right energy to finally come, you know what I'm saying? Weezy, you know, he is God. But as important as this moment was to the city, the whole thing was ultimately overshadowed by two things. Firstly, just how bad his performance was. Mm. Yeah, this got him clowned almost universally and for good reason. I would have shot my TV if I seen this shit at the Super Bowl halftime right. show. Lil Wayne is one of the greatest rappers of all time and possibly the worst life performer ever. Not, Shaded not by Tyler, the definitely. creator, who declared that those little humps right before Kill Me, under a post that was making fun of him, this came just days after his feature on Sticky pushed Wheezy to 187 yeah, career Hot 100 hits, extending his record-breaking streak to 21 years. To make matters worse, his performance was eerily close to Orlando Brown's parody of his vocals, especially after he had campaigned hard to land a spot on the Super Bowl halftime show in his hometown. And as the footage of that oh. performance went viral, people realized that Wayne's fans should never have been losing their mind over Weezy getting overlooked for the gig. This is the performance y'all were screaming and crying for? Wayne might go, but thank you, Hove. But Damn. while that got him clowned online, the real problem was that during this special moment in front of his hometown crowd, he still couldn't accept that the Super Bowl was never his to lose. That moment I said to myself, I want to be 
He's still talking about it? All right. Super Bowl one day in front of my mom. And I worked my ass off to get that position. All right, now he's on the paper. In recent times, hip hop has gotten a little fed up with him wallowing over the loss of a dream. How can something that was never offered to you be ripped away from you? Yeah, what are we the talking about? The location of the Super Bowl doesn't that. always determine the performer. This pity party Hello. needs to stop immediately. This is so fucking sorry. So why is this bothering people so much? And what can it's he do the to say this place? People don't like that. Well, there's a lot of reasons for it, but it ultimately boils down to the fact that he was never the right man for the job, and his entitlement isn't making it any easier to feel sorry for him. Back when it was initially revealed, Weezy didn't hide the fact that he was pretty much keep, destroyed whatever. by the news that Kendrick Lamar would be performing at the Super Bowl halftime show in NOLA rather than him. First of all, I want to say forgive me for, uh, forgive me for the delay. Just the delay, I want to say, uh, I had to first of all, I had to get strength, I had to get strength enough to do this without breaking. Um, I must say thank you. I must say thank you to every voice, every opinion, all the care, all the love and the support out there. Is your, your words turn into to arms and, and held me up when, when I try to fall back. That hurt, hurt a lot. You know what I'm talking about, it hurt a whole lot. Um, I blame myself for not being mentally prepared for a letdown, for just automatically mentally putting myself in that position like somebody told me that was my position. So I blame myself for that, but you know, I thought that was nothing better than that, that, that spot, and that stage, and that platform in my city. So it hurt, it hurt a whole lot. But even though he was upset, it seemed like to begin with, he was taking responsibility for getting ahead of himself. So, like I said, it broke me, and I'm just trying to put me back together. But my He's God, saying that, but his actions show differently. Thanks Why so. are you even making this video? Like, I don't... My peers, my friends, my family, and my homies on the sports television, everybody repping me. I really appreciate that. I really do. I feel like I let... All of y'all down are not getting that opportunity, but I'm working on me and I'm working. Thank you. It's a weird situation that's only got stranger with his claim that it was snatched from him. And for some, Weezy speaking like that leads to questions about what really happened behind the scenes. Because he's taught, he, he's just very entitled or uh, he was promised something. But when I heard he that, I, he I had promised. actually went backstage because this was after, like he did more songs after the reunion happened. Right. And I was like, yo, I need to take a break. Went backstage, we watched it on the monitors. When I heard ripped away from me, I said, oh, Wayne is starting to fire again. But while it's clear that the scars of that experience are still lingering, the fact that he's been so ungracious about it towards someone who loves him really isn't helping his case. In fact, it's building animosity towards him. Wayne that we aren't used to seeing. Kendrick Lamar is going to be the first rapper to headline the Super Bowl solo and is a gigantic fan of Lil Wayne, who's done nothing but act like an entitled brat instead of congratulating Kendrick who rightfully deserves it. Hello. This is a blemish on Wayne's legacy. And while people were happy to ride for Weezy initially, that argument has worn thin after performances like what we saw at Louisiana. Yeah, it's more of a rap thing, unfortunately. And I get it. It's, it's in New Orleans, so people thought, you know, it was gonna go to. I, I don't even know, know how people thought that. that. Yeah, I don't know. I don't even That's know how such people a thought weird that. narrative. Like, yo, it's in New Orleans, so it should go to Wayne. What? Nobody thought that, but Twitter. it's a. Internet Twitter <laughs> rumor that they just ran with, and to, to the, I'm sorry, but like Wayne, the audacity to say this was ripped from me, it was never yours to have. You were never in consideration for it. Some guys on Twitter took the opportunity to throw your name out there and be like, would have been cool if Wayne, and then it got enough steam that all of a sudden it should have been yours. That's not how shit works. Yeah. It was never yours. Instead, the sentiment has changed to have people, okay. including longtime Tunchi fans, feeling like he needs to act more naturally. Weezy needs to grow up. This man is 42 and hating. Still goaded, but damn, he's looking weird. The first time Wayne complained about the Super Bowl was slightly tolerable. Hearing him complain about it again comes across as whining. This is a strange situation for Weezy to be in where even those who identify as Weezy fans are looking at him like this. It wasn't so long ago that Nori claimed Weezy to have the best and most loyal audience of them all. Be honest with y'all, Lil Wayne might have the best fans in hip hop. They're polite, mm. they're annoying. Okay. But they're polite. They are the they polite. in my DM. How you doing, sir? When is this Wayne interview dropping? When is this? I just want to go out on a limb and tell y'all. Lil Wayne got the best fans. Not only are they crazy, but they're polite. 
but in all fairness to those fans, they have tolerated a lot, sticking with him all these years. Including situations which had directly contributed to Wayne never ever getting that Super Bowl show that he wanted in the first place. Over the years, Wayne's loyal followers have tolerated a lot. Because it's not like he's never let his fans down before. At times, he's even behaved in the kind of rash way that Wheezy is now, when it comes to his refusal to acknowledge Kendrick's show or even wish him well. Let's start with the infamous onstage walk-offs, which have proven that he's not exactly the guy you want to sink millions of dollars of investment into. Among his brattiest moments were his appearance at the High Times Cup, where he demanded to never be booked for the show again. <laughs> In another instance, he stormed off stage after just a half an hour, throwing microphones to the ground. Is there a problem with the sound or something? Just last year, there was an incident where he ended a show in LA prematurely. As he felt his Young Money artists, such as Alan Cubis and Lil Twist, weren't getting the respect they deserved from the crowd. So he literally shortchanged well, his fans and left. I'm really mad. We might be very double back to these folks. We worked too hard for this shit. We worked way too hard. This motherfucking artist now, that was Twist, that was Jazz. Mm -hmm. You know, you got money to appreciate y'all time. Look, he don't even seem like he agreed with that. At that time, the hip-hop world That's wasn't exactly stupid. pleased with his overly emotional and entitled display. I understand Wayne's loyalty, but you can't make an audience slash crowd Hello? cheer or accept a new artist. Hello? It needs to happen naturally. Like Over what? the years, a crowd not giving him the response he feels he's earned simply by being who he is has been a persistent problem. In one instance, it even led to him quitting a co-headline tour with Blink-182 at the midway point as he didn't like being an opener. Why you agree with him? I just want the people to know, if you're wondering, please forgive me, but I am so not used to performing to a crowd and there's not too many, you know, like still from, that's not my swag. I'm not sure how long I'm gonna be able to do this tour. What makes it much for people to include me in other instances, medical no, that's emergency wild. Got in the way of his ability to perform. He had to Why would you agree to do Vegas in 2017 <laughs> when he had multiple seizures and was found unconscious in his hotel room. Oh. This followed a similar incident in 2013 alongside many other scares over the years. While none of his fans would fault him for having a genuine health issue, Wayne's health problems unfortunately might be are self -inflicted. Yeah, I was about for to say. Career, Let's we, not act like, oh, he has no control. He's just sick. He's just old. Hey, this man is only 42. I thought he was older than that to be honest with you he has a long history of substance abuse let's call it what it is after you're doing that for so many years he's he's probably been doing this for what 20 30 years at this point i feel like he started with drugs at a very young age okay I'm, i feel like i watched a video where that said that 10 11 something crazy like that so yeah You've been doing that for so long, yet yeah, you're going to have seizures, heart attacks, strokes. You're going to start, your body going to start to shut down because it, it can only handle so much. So there's that. Easy has been wrestling with his love of sipping syrup. And over the years, he's veered from defending it as part of his cultural identity to claiming that he doesn't want to be a bad influence on others. I know I picked up the cup and I started drinking. It was promethazine mixed with codeine, which you all know is syrup. I started drinking it because I'm from the South, New Orleans. I was young and I watched Michael Jordan in game That's six it. and made me want to go right into my driveway and shoot around. Well, I was also young and I listened to Pimp C and they said we was drinking, we drinking that lean. A drug that killed some of the legends he looked up to, including MC. Wayne has been asked time and time again about what it would take for him to kick the cup. And at times, he's even publicly declared that he was trying to take this powerful opioid out of his life forever. Do you do that anymore at all? No, I can't. And what made you stop? <laughs> really? I was doing it too much, and you know, the doctor kind of told me, you know, like. 
breaking up. We can't tell you what to do, but I suggest that your mom tell you to stop. But his adventures with the purple drink are well known. So too is the extent that he consumes it. In fact, he has so much of it around him that he almost killed Currency by accident. He pulled up the whole six thing and then put them back in the rings. So it looked like harmless purple Hawaiian punches in the fridge. Mm. So I ran in basketball thirsty and fucking down one of them bitches, like right. standing in the hallway of the bus, just killing it. Right. And he came on the bus and was like, oh, Lord. Because he knew I don't fuck with you, like, right. spit him. You probably about to die. Ugh. An addiction that's threatened his life time and time again. Wheezy even spoke about the pains of withdrawals that's on the fame track, I Feel Like Dying. He literally said the following lyrics. I'm at the top of the top, but still I climb. And if I should ever fall, the ground would then turn to wine. Pop, pop, pop. I feel like flying. Then I feel like frying. Awesome. Then I feel like dying. And while it's unclear how much he still consumes it, Wayne very much still seems to be intoxicated in public on a regular basis. Whether that's via weed, drink, or drank is unclear, oh, but it still seems like sobriety still is in a way that you'll often I'm find it. That. That was my and when shit. he got arrested after a private jet search in late though. December 2019, the cops found not only a gold-plated handgun, but a whole array of drugs including suspected cocaine, ecstasy, marijuana, heroin, painkillers, and prescription strength cough syrup. At 42 years of age, Weezy's fans want to see him begin to look after himself a little better. Hello. And from the outside looking in, it's his continued celebration of this kind of lifestyle that made him ineligible for the Super Bowl. Wayne spent 90% of his career promoting liquid dope and raised a generation of junkies. And y'all think the NFL is about to put him on? Because when you examine Wayne's legacy, it's impossible to gloss over all the good he's done from a musical standpoint. But it's fair to say that he also contributed to a culture that has negatively impacted hip-hop too. Even claiming some of its best, brightest, and youngest. You have those people that take it to the extreme. Like for the example, uh, I think Wang has said after a while he wasn't even pouring codeine with pop. He was drinking it straight out the bottle. While Weezy has been able to survive with his life intact, there's no denying that drug abuse has had a massive impact on him both physically and mentally. And this causes another level of frustration for hip hop in that it stops him from being as great as he truly could. Don't be. I put you Not to sleep, mention that it has to stay away. To the extent okay. that he can't remember his own lyrics or feel any emotional tie to where he was at when he made his classic projects. I don't know, the Carter 3, the Carter 2, the Carter 1 from the Carter 4, he admitted. And that's just my God honest truth. You could lie, you could ask me about such and such song, I wouldn't even know what we talking wow. about. Because of this, the music doesn't hold any significance to him in the same way as it does for others. So, lyrics that his fans cherish can be presented to him as if he'd never heard them before. This might be my favorite Terrible. Wayne line of all time, person. Yeah. This last one was fun. Alright, here we go. Safe sex is great sex. Better wear latex. Cause you don't want that latex. And I think I'm latex. Oh! Oh, I'm not saying that! In fact, this isn't just a problem in a live setting because now it's a crucial part of his songwriting process too. I literally, bro, when I'm doing some of my shit, you can if you go through my phone history, when my Google history is going, and you press L. First thing that'll come up is Lil Wayne lyrics. I literally have to Google my lyrics to make sure I didn't say oh certain stuff. Oh my god! Before. Yo, I swear to God I do that too. Man, that's how long we've been doing this shit. Yeah! I just did that shit last night. That's why I just told you. That's why I say as soon as you go to my Google, it's, my safari is gonna be Lil Wayne lyrics. Now, Wayne has taken drastic measures and uses a teleprompter to help him with the words. Essentially meaning that this legendary rapper is now doing karaoke to his new tracks. Understandably, fans are able to understand the limitations of where he can perform today. I love Wayne, and I will never take credit away from him as a genius, but I can understand why they didn't have him perform. He never remembers his lines and his performances are trash. Beyond those trash. lingering issues, there is the simple fact that Wayne doesn't handle his brand well. For starters, his recent catalog has been far from spectacular. I haven't dropped anything that's that crazy. The anticipation for Carter Five was that we would been we've been anticipating it for how many years? I don't know. It was a long time coming. But beyond that, it hasn't been anything crazy. So when I think about it like this, I'm like, even project wise, outside of your performances, it's not really given that much for somebody to hold on to for you to even perform at the Super Bowl. Why would they ask you? And at times, he does and says things that you would never expect a top-tier rapper to engage in, including performing at weddings for a bag where he should be selling out arenas. But 
at the minute is that victim complex he's having which came about around the time of him not getting the Super Bowl placement which is really hurting his reputation. Because now, fans are wondering if it was him who was responsible for the notoriously bad attitudes of some of his Young Money signees too. Before I show you that clip, I gotta tell you guys about today's video sponsor. Your Man, balls, bro. He's lost a chant, holiday grooming. Go check it out now. But now let's get back into the video. Although he feels like he's lost a chance that he felt was rightfully his, Louisiana has proved that New Orleans is still rocking with him to the fullest. And even with all the evidence to the contrary, there are the ones who really still want to see him on that halftime show stage. I just felt that they should have said, okay, we're gonna let you guys share it. Because Wayne have influenced the next generation of rap. Like the, a lot of these young people, this is how serious it is with Wayne. A lot of these young rappers, a lot of these young people still know who Wayne is. Whereas one time I was talking about when BG first got out, it was a little fever. She was like 25 years old, and she was like, who's BG? I said, you never heard of Bling Bling? She said, no. She said, well, how many miles listen to that? You know what I'm saying? So, <laughs> I mean, it's you know, true. Yeah, you know what I'm saying? So, we're going to show you, like, so many people didn't know who BG was, but they know who Wayne is because Wayne constantly kept music staying with the times, so, you know. But when you really look at everything Wayne has accomplished, it seems like he's focusing on the wrong things by getting so hung up on the Super Bowl scenario. Just look at Louisiana Fest. That same night that he claimed the Super Bowl was taken from him, he got the key to the city and was informed that he would receive the first star on the New Orleans Walk of Fame on Canal Street. And there's no denying that he deserves that, as he has always put on for his city to the fullest. All New Orleans music inspires me. We influenced us with the early New Orleans artists before us. I really want that New Orleans. I'm a girl. We all just following mm. that fabric, that tradition, that culture now, and it's easy to follow it when it's not true. I really want to eat there too. The only issue is that at this stage in his career, Lil Wayne needs to focus more on what he's achieved rather than let what hasn't manage to define him. And there are times where he's shown that he's capable of this. During a speech after he won the Global Impact Award last year, Wayne spoke openly about the sacrifices that were made and everything he's achieved against the odds. You know, like where I'm from, New Orleans, where I'm from, you, you're not supposed to do this. Where I'm from, I walked into my mama room when I was 14. She asked me for a kid because my dad was killed and her son had just blew up and went on his first tour and we did not know that it would be six months. When Wayne is able to really reflect, he seems to know what he's achieved and not only that, is aware that he's more relevant than most rappers in his age bracket ever have been. 14? Obviously being in the game for so long, like what is your why? Honestly, man, it's literally just waking up. Waking up and getting a chance to do it again and also being, being validated and being still wanted and people wanting to hear me, wanting to listen to me. That right there is the... That's the exact answer. There's nothing that is not for this, is not for that. It's simply waking up, getting the chance to be great, and trying my hardest to just be 1% better than I was yesterday. In the past few months, that doesn't always seem to be enough for him when it really should. But mm. this is where the very thing that makes him who he is becomes a problem. Throughout his career, Weezy has never wanted to be second best or play second fiddle to anyone. So it's this drive and love of artistry that keeps him there to this day. It'll be hard not to keep being creative. If you are a creative person, right. it's just gonna be, it's, it's, it's up to you to want to put the creation together. And that's why I said, until I don't have that energy to want to, the words that keep popping up in my mind when I'm, I can't watch TV without words, analogies, and I, trust me, trust me. And when that stop happening, until I'm ready, if I don't call Mac, if I don't call Lucy, shout out Lucy, that's my sister. If I don't hear Lucy and say, Studio 2 a.m. You know what I mean? If I don't hear her say, Studio 1 a.m. Don't get it twisted, nothing here has been said out of hate for Lil Wayne. Now 30 years in the game, Lil Weezy has done it all and said it all. His career is a benchmark for what you can achieve through hard work and always trying to improve your craft. However, what all of hip-hop is saying right now is that rather than keep hanging on to the one thing that isn't in his grasp, 
He should focus on preserving and expanding on the legacy mm, he does have. I agree. Because after all this time, it'd be a damn shame for it to be obscured by his behavior in the later stages of his time on the mic. I feel like this does happen quite a bit where we notice our goats and legends start to, you know, become more entitled and it does kind of start to smear their legacy a bit. This also made me think of Nicki Minaj, you know, she also has had recent antics that have turned a lot of people off and it, it does kind of fuck up what, what you've built for so many years. So it's just a shame because it's like these people are at the tail end of their career. So it would suck for them to uh, put such a stain on what they have built, you know, but Lil Wayne is the goat. He'll always be the goat. He has inspired so many people has so many classics. Nobody can ever take that away from him, but his behavior is a bit, it's a bit ridiculous in my opinion, but yeah, we'll, we'll see what happens. Hopefully he gets well soon and he, you know, can take his health more seriously, but yeah, he's not performing at the Super Bowl. <laughs> he's just not uh, next year, for sure, next year. He's not. Um, and if he keeps performing like this, don't seem like he'll ever perform there. So hopefully he, you know, gets better with that and, like I said, kick the cup and, you know, get serious about his health. But anyway, y'all let me know what y'all think. Let me know what other videos you're going to watch, and I'll see y'all in the next one. Bye!